Paul Ryan here, and I'm with two fantastic individuals who have become very good friends of mine. One is Shelley Redford Young, and one is Dr. Robert Young. And just as a coincidence, they both have the last name. So we're going to check in with them and see if they've ever met each other. Have you ever met each other? <laughs> Robert Young, <laughs> Shelley Redford uh, Young? How do you do? Yeah, we're <laughs> still meeting. Oh, you're still meeting? <laughs> Yes. After 42 years. Wow. Yeah. I thought it was just a coincidence that you two were on the show together. <laughs> but you're both married. Is that what the, the deal is? Yes, we've been married for 36 years. Wow. But we've known each other most of our life. Yeah, we met young. He robbed the cradle. Yeah, really? Yeah. So <laughs> I want to hear he that story. Robbed, the yeah, cradle. Rob robbed the cradle. How yeah. did, you, did you meet in school? Uh, we met... Uh, over a swimming and tennis club. He was a tennis player and I was a swimmer. And, and what happened? Uh, he sat on my towel and I couldn't get my towel out from under his chair. And That was a good move. That was, that was a very good move. <laughs> That's the sit on the towel, you won't yeah. be able to move move. Uh-huh. Yeah. Really? That's the one. Yeah. I was 15. Really? A baby. And Well, I, I remember her at, a, at another tennis club a lot earlier, so... You were, what, 12? No, 13? she was probably younger than that. <laughs> wow. But you noticed her at another tennis club. Yeah, well, we, we went to the same element, elementary school. We went to the same junior high school. We went mm. to the same high school. We went to the same college, university, yeah. I should say. So what was it about Shelly that rang your towel? <laughs> well, Shelly is, if not the, one of the most beautiful women in the world. And, I mean, so she's physically attractive. But I'm also attracted to her, to her uh, vivacious personality. And that you do have. And what was Thank the attraction you. to... Thank you. Uh, what was the attraction to the young, crystal blue-eyed, bleach blonde, tan tennis guy? Thank God you were with tan. With the great yeah. legs. <laughs> wow. With the great tennis yeah. legs. Yeah. And, and you know, my father was a tennis player. So I thought, wow, dad would be proud. Mm -hmm. you know? And um, uh, yeah, he was just a, he was a very comical guy. He, he had a funny side to him too. So he was not only very cute, but he made me laugh. And, and that's the uh, key, isn't it? I mean, it eventually is. that is the key. Yeah, I mean, that's how mm -hmm. to keep somebody happy: look good and make them laugh. <laughs> so you were a tennis pro prior to being a scientist, mm -hmm. obviously. Well, I think I was a scientist, and I became a tennis player. But I've always been in, in, interested in the sciences. He I asked love for a science. microscope when you were seven, when he was seven. Well, five, five or six years old for Christmas. Yeah. Actually, it was the invisible woman I asked for. <laughs> ah. So you, he, it's the invisible yeah. man. Yes. What did you want? You mean, as a youth, and it's interesting how it's manifest into mm -hmm. a career, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you were looking for something through that glass. Well, I was looking at uh, blood cells. I was looking at hair. I was looking at, you know chicken eggs. I was looking at uh, <laughs> things that kids look at, boogers and, you know, saliva and, uh, you know, what do they look like magnified? Mm -hmm. I, was, I was curious. So what brought you into health? What really brought you? Was, when you first started being a scientist, was it because of health or was it an, another reason? I, I, think, I think that was uh, coached to me that uh, fitness was, and health were, were critical for performance. In other words, to improve the quality of my tennis game, I not only had to be fit, but I had to be healthy. And we thought it was really funny that uh, our coaches were recommending taking vitamin and mineral supplements in the uh, early 60s. We thought, mm. oh, gee, is this the future? Mm -hmm. We're going to be eating food out of a, out of a capsule. So uh, it was very, very strange. I mean, vitamins and minerals and supplementations and you know, jogging three miles and, you know, who was doing that? In you the, were. In the 60s, and we, we were doing it. You were doing it, both of you. <clears throat> yeah, we've always been runners. And what does um, running give somebody? Wow. Running, for me, is the ultimate exercise in being able to break a sweat um, and moving through air and through space and being out in nature and capturing sunshine and just turning yourself into a well-oiled machine that mm -hmm. just runs, that just hums. And running does that? Running does that for me, and, um, and I, I think I'm a healthy addict to running. I feel really strange if I don't get out and get that run. And I don't run a long distance, maybe three miles, you know. But That's a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, just, it just makes me feel brand new. 
running three miles uphill is a lot different <laughs> than running yeah. three miles flat. But and you do it uphill on the yes. ranch? Oh yeah, yes. on the ranch and also we have a home in Alpine and we're running up and down the, the Wasatch Mountains of the Rocky Mountains, uh, the Wasatch Range of the Rocky Mountains. And, and it's not uh, an easy run. It's very, very uh, grueling. So when you became a scientist, was it for improving people's health? Because a lot of people come into it because you teach what you need to learn yourself. Was there something yeah. you needed to learn? Yeah. Well, I was just curious, and my curiosity was, you know, the curiosity about how the body works, you know, the different parts of the body and how they function. And I got very, very interested in, of course, different kinds of things to look at, from leaves, you know, just organic matter to uh, mineral matter. And I was curious about how crystals formed, you know, the shapes of, uh, or the crystallization mm. of water, you know, s looking at snowflakes under a microscope, you know, as they're thawing to, you know, just looking at the uh, magnification of the structures of, of leaves to, you know, I started a insect collection and had an elaborate insect collection and, right. and I was very interested in butterflies and, and how they fly and look and how they would fly around and flap their rings and so I would look under the microscope at the structures of, of, of their wings and I was very curious about things Were like that. Were you impressed that. with his collection? Oh, <coughs> the beetles. <laughs> they were huge, and yeah. um, and I was going to say um, also in there, Robert. Even when he was a tennis player for the University of Utah, and we were early on in our marriage, he loved to hang out with doctors. He loved to be in their presence and medical about, doctors. Yeah, mm -hmm. he liked that. Some of his friends were doctors to learn about how the body works and how it can improve. And yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I studied at college. You know, was biology. And uh, biology was something, uh, microbiology was something that I've been interested in for so long. And, but I never really envisioned it going anywhere. I mean, I thought, okay, this is something of personal interest, but I never thought that I would take it to the heights that, uh, that, we've per oh, that we perceive anyway that we've taken yeah. it to. Yeah, I find it interesting that you h hung out with doctors a lot. Mm -hmm. But you sort of broke away from the traditional medical route. Yeah, I mean, you know, I always found myself in uh, situations where if someone was injured, I was there, Johnny on the spot, trying to assist them. Um, it was just, it was, it was already there, it was innate in, within me to want to care for others. And so I had that feeling of, Oh wow, this person's hurt. You know what can I do? And uh, so that's always been there, and that, and then just interested in how bones heal. To you know some of the orthopedic surgeon friends that I had, uh, heart surgeons. Uh, you know, just you perform surgery yourself. Uh, <laughs> Have you? Well, I wouldn't want to answer that. <laughs> on the grounds that it might incriminate. <laughs> on the grounds that it may incriminate me. But that wasn't your route. Surgery wasn't your route. No, but I think I would be a good surgeon. And, uh, you know, I, had I pursued, uh, rather than microbiology and biochemistry, I've had a pursued, let's say, medicine in the traditional sense, then I would have become a surgeon. And I probably would have probably been a surgeon for for an orthopedic surgeon or, or a heart surgeon. Because you, what you do is so unique, you are able to reverse people's disease. Well, I like to say it is, is that I give them the knowledge so and empower can, them yeah. mm -hmm. so that they can reverse it themselves. And, you know, and, I, and I help them to shift their thinking from looking at symptoms as the disease and focusing on what is really causing the symptomology. So dealing with that confusion is very, very important. And letting people know the disease is only a symptom of a state of metabolic or dietary imbalance.